My last video that broke down my lab work left a lot to be desired. That video was designed to break down my metabolic panel when I simply went to the doctor and had kind of a routine checkup. But I realized upon putting it out there that there were a lot of things missing and I wanted to do a follow-up to expand on that lab work. There were some levels that were a little bit low, some levels that were a little bit elevated that raised some concern with people, all the way to the point where some channels did rebuttal videos wondering if there was exogenous hormones at play. I do wanna make sure you hit the red subscribe button because we're always putting out good, clean, honest content and also hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications and show up daily for the videos to help boost the algorithm and get these videos out there. Come on, we need your support to keep these videos rocking and rolling. And then after this video, uh, there is a special link to check out Thrive Market. Thrive Market is a way for you to get your groceries and all kinds of pantry staples online. Super convenient, saves me a ton of time, saves me a ton of money because I can just get my stuff online, it gets delivered to my doorstep. But the best thing is you can sort by different food category, by uh, diet like keto, paleo, vegan, whatever, and find all kinds of goodies there and then get them delivered right to your doorstep. So special link down below for viewers of my channel. I wanna make sure that you get a chance to check them out after this video. I have low testosterone levels, 417. The scale is 250 to 827 nanograms per deciliter. I am in the middle on the low side, clinically low, not super, super low, but low enough to question how the heck does this guy maintain muscle? And we're gonna talk about that because one of the biggest pieces that I mention on my channel is that testosterone is just one of many levers that is pulled to maintain muscle. I talk about what's called mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, where your body is either in an anabolic mode or not in an anabolic mode, depending on when you eat, when you don't eat. Okay, so it's all about this on or off switch within the body. Testosterone is still very, very important, do not get me wrong, but there are multiple levels at play. And I'm just addressing this briefly because testosterone levels can be low at the serum level and your free testosterone levels can still be relatively low in the blood, but then when you get into the tissue level, they could be a little bit higher. So I could have higher degrees of testosterone at the tissue level. Anyhow, I will also get into what is called luteinizing hormone and my follicle stimulating hormone. So the fun thing is, is when those videos came out, uh, breaking down my breakdown of my lab work, I saw them and I went the very next day to get my lab work done. But he actually reached out to me privately and he literally went and got blood work done the next day after seeing my video, sent it to me to go through. And now I have a second blood panel that we're gonna go through with you guys on the channel with the gonadotropins in there, the LH, the FSH, and updated total testosterone, a free testosterone, which was missing in the last one as well, as well as updated CBC, metabolic parameters, uh, thyroid, um, iron, etc. And we're gonna be diving into it with you guys and uh, with Thomas. We're gonna head to LabCorp. I've got my lab requisition form with all the testing that I'm gonna get done. And we're gonna head on over there. And in a couple of days, we'll have the results. But take a ride with me as we head to LabCorp and get this fun party started. It's early morning, I'm fasted. I had a little workout, but I haven't had any coffee, just some water. Let's go. Has anyone else ever noticed that it's pretty much impossible to find a LabCorp or a Quest Lab? It's like they're always buried in these medical complexes. I can't for the life of me find this place. Well, that LabCorp decided to be closed on Tuesdays. So hop back in the truck and Find another one. All right, let's try it again. This one looks a tad more hopeful. Guess that's my proof. All right, now it's time to go home and just wait. And I got every single thing tested that I would need to get tested to dispel what was said, but also to be able to publicly defend myself face to face, not behind a keyboard. So watch the rest of that footage. I'm up in Tahoe in a little family getaway and I just got the email that my results have come in. So I'm going to open up my email and I'm gonna do a screen recording so that you can see me opening up the email, opening up the document and logging into the secure portal. That way you can see that the results haven't been altered, nothing like that. And this is just how it is. So let's go ahead and open them up, see what they say.
Okay, look, the results are here. The most important thing out of all of this is I wanted to be the one that elevated the fitness industry. Enough of this toxicity, enough of this he said, she said nonsense. Let's all be adults here and let's stand up and have adult conversations. So interestingly enough, the first person that put out a rebuttal video to my lab work, I went on their channel. I went on their channel and I broke down my expanded lab work because I saw the video that he did and I thought it was very well put together and he was right. It left a lot to be desired. However, that video wasn't designed to break down my hormone panel, my testosterone. It really wasn't. It was kind of an afterthought. So he's going to come on this video in a little bit and break down whether or not I should go on testosterone replacement therapy. Get a little bit of an expert opinion from someone that owns a clinic and knows what he's looking at. Before he comes on this video, I want to address a few things. Okay, yes, my testosterone levels were low. Yes, my iron levels were low. And if you watch the video that's on his channel, we go in depth for 45, 50 minutes talking about why my iron was low because the follow-up blood work, you'll see my iron levels are fine. And some of the things like my hemoglobin, my hematocrit and stuff like that, we'll talk about that. But the big elephant in the room again is Thomas has relatively low testosterone levels. Does that mean that he's unhealthy? Is that bad? Well, one thing that we very much so have to remember is are you symptomatic? Now I'm doing this video not necessarily for me and for putting my story out there. I'm doing this video more so for the millions of people that watch my channel that wonder if maybe they should go on testosterone replacement therapy because maybe you're in a situation like me where your levels are a little low. The question is, how do you feel? After my blood work came in, I had a quick consult with a very close doctor friend of mine, and his name is Dr. Brad Garner. He's with uh, Mercy Health System. He's seeing patients all the time, and he also understands the keto diet. But anyhow, he said, well, how do you feel? You see, your lifestyle piece is the biggest part of the equation. My levels may be clinically low, but I have energy, I have focus, I'm strong, I maintain muscle. I have no lifestyle symptoms of low testosterone. So one could argue you're not really a candidate for it. But someone that's worked in the medical community before, I see that there is a purpose and a reason for testosterone replacement therapy and I have no issue with it whatsoever. If I get to a point where my levels justify that I should do it to feel better, then great. But either way, I wanted to bring in someone that knows what they're talking about. So Derek, the guy that originally broke me down on his video, I went on his channel, and here's his two cents regarding some of my lab work. Make sure you're keeping it locked in after this portion, because then we're going to get to the details and you're going to hear my side and I'm going to break down some of my lab work, not just my testosterone, but my glucose and things like that as well. All right, so I've got Derek here from More Plates, More Dates. Now, Derek did what I would say probably the one of the better videos that was breaking down one of my videos. I wouldn't even call it a reaction video. It was professionally done. And you went into some detail on my lab work and you know raised some very valid points that kind of was the impetus for me going and getting additional lab work but uh, so derek i wanted to welcome you on i appreciate everything that you do and i appreciate your channel i want to make sure that people do after this video go check out his channel but uh, hey man good to have you no thanks for having me man it is um very much appreciated to put me on this platform and talk about stuff that uh, i'm very passionate about and um, I was honestly surprised you reached out to a channel of my size, but that's awesome to be a feature here, be able, be able to go over this with you and whatnot, kind of dissect um, the follow-up lab work, which I appreciate you reaching out to me to give me the opportunity to be the, uh, you know, the first to go over it with not only your audience, but mine as well. So very much appreciated, man. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. So, I mean, um, Derek does a lot of, like, he's what I would consider one of the best hormone experts on YouTube as far as like testosterone goes and everything like that. It's an area that I am not super well versed in as far as, uh, you know, exogenous hormones go or anything like that. So I figured it makes sense to bring someone that really knows. Um, I'm considering, considering my testosterone levels where they're at, they're, they're low, but they're not like ridiculously low. Um, we have some additional context, which I'll let you kind of elaborate on that shows that like, I don't have like any, um, you know, issues with exogenous hormones kind of messing me up right now. My testosterone levels are just kind of low from dieting and things like that and possibly my stress levels. But I'm considering like, is TRT something for me? I'm not opposed to it, but I want to make sure I'm weighing my options. Yeah. So in the context of your blood work, so we looked at the, my video was going over his first panel, which was um, not really meant to focus specifically on the low T. It was just sort of a biomarker included as an overall picture of his health status. And I noticed the 417 nanogram per deciliter total test, which is for his age and for his, you know, 
very good lifestyle, diet model, et cetera, I thought was pretty low and was sort of, you know, worth exploring further. And giving more context on the situation, though, Thomas elaborated on how he, you know, intermittently throughout the year, he will get into shape that involves getting to like mid single digit body fat percentage, which is very, very hard on the body and can reduce your testosterone levels significantly. So there is the context in that it's not like he necessarily has like clinically hypogonadism, like perpetually, it's more so like a diet induced state. So like for him, normally he actually walks around with a 600 nanogram per deciliter total, which is reasonable. And it's not like you're symptomatic all the time either. So that is something to keep in mind too. So some people that may, you know, just see this, this uh, 417 on a piece of paper and freak out and the follow up blood work, which he was gracious enough to send me and go over was a 381 nanogram per deciliter total, which by many people's standards would be like pretty close to deficient and with a free testosterone actually clinically deficient of an 8.5 picogram per milliliter on a scale of 8.7 to 25.1. But the context in that is that this is sort of an expected outcome if you are dieting yourself very, very aggressively. And Thomas has, you know, talked about how he maintains single digit body fat percentage year round and to be, you know, get into shape for uh, um, different brand deals and whatnot, you know, it requires, you know, dieting a bit more aggressively than the average person may need to. So that's sort of the context on why this may appear the way it is. It's more of a intermittent thing. But for me, the thing that became very apparent is that he does this quite often. Like most people are not trying to get to single digit body fat percentage ever, let alone on a consistent basis throughout every single year. So for you, you've been dieting very aggressively for three plus months, you mentioned. And it seems like every year you do this, you know, like fairly often, you're either like 9% year round, or you're dieting down to like five, 6% water manipulating, doing all the stuff that could be very hard on your endocrine parameters. So for me, the sort of thing we were discussing is perhaps normally, he may not actually justifiably need TRT yet, but based on his current lifestyle and the situations he's imposed on himself, maybe he would benefit from exogenous testosterone. So that is sort of what we're discussing here. And for me, like I think personally, if this is something you plan on doing long term where you're going to, it's not just like a one, one off, you know, I have to do this photo shoot and I'm going to get in shape this one time where you're actually for months on end, like keeping yourself on a self-imposed state of hypogonadism, essentially. It's not clinical, but it's like yeah. by the number on a piece of paper, many people would interpret it as such just based on what we're seeing. So for, for you, I think performance-wise, health-wise, like perhaps even like cardiovascular health-wise, it may make sense to deploy testosterone if this is a regular thing for you that's going to be like, I assume, presumably, this is going to be long term strategy wise for your body composition. You've mentioned you never plan on getting above 10% really at all. And yeah. yeah, and then obviously with the brand deals and whatnot, like for you, it may make sense to incorporate it to not only proactively prevent uh, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, you know, cardiovascular risk, all these kind of things play into these low T levels. So for me, like, you know, I would like, man to man, I would say like, this is something that would be definitely something to consider yeah. based on the context of your current situation. No, that's interesting. And that's, you know, why I wanted to bring you on is because it's, you know, you look at like, we can touch on like my previous lab work and I'll just make a brief mention, you know, I didn't indicate my luteinizing hormone, my follicle stimulating hormone or anything like that. because some people would argue, oh, this guy was on, you know, exogenous testosterone already. He came off of it. His testosterone levels plummeted. So yeah. the whole reason Derek and I are talking is I did follow up blood work to demonstrate that my LH and my FSH levels were normal. I mean, they were low-ish, but they were in the normal range yeah. showing that, okay, that isn't the issue. Um, so now we actually have this more evident issue of, okay, well, Thomas has relatively low T and it's not because of, you know, gear, so to speak. It, it's what's going on. So now we are addressing this. The thing that I kind of wanted to bring up that's probably important for the audience to know is that, you know, maintaining muscle isn't always just about testosterone. So people might be saying like, how is he maintaining this? Well, with things I talk about all the time, the ketogenic diet, fat adaptation, you have a degree of leucine sparing effects that allow you to maintain muscle at different levers, different avenues outside of testosterone. Could I be maintaining my muscle even more if testosterone was in the equation? Most definitely. But there's more than one way to skin a cat when you go to this, right? I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people should note too, you are probably what I would consider a genetic phenom in that <laughs> the amount of muscle you maintain with these levels. So this is not necessarily, it would be even more so of an argument for somebody who is the average Joe than for you. I feel like that TRT would be justifiable in this situation because most people aren't going to maintain what you maintain based on your lab work. I'm not to say yeah. that you should or shouldn't necessarily, but just based on like going back to the gonadotropins with your LH and FSH, we've, we can see clearly that the problem is not necessarily pituitary signaling. It is more so just your lifestyle and your diet. So for some people, that's totally correctable. If they were you in this situation, they would just eat more food, sleep yeah. more, et cetera. And they would probably correct the majority of the issue. The people who have self-imposed this state via their lifestyle long-term though, and plan to continue it, that's where intervening might make more sense and yeah. where I would potentially look at, you know, deploying some sort of testosterone cream, injection, et cetera, and see if it can improve not only biomarkers with your health, like I think you would actually probably perhaps even notice your glucose fasting levels come down when you would deploy yeah. it. In addition to that, um, just your mental state is going to be way easier. You're probably going to sleep better too. Your mood, everything's going to become more in line and I think you would be overall healthier if this is a lifestyle pattern you wish to continue with long term. So just the yeah. context in that a lot, of, a lot of people need to understand though is it's not that you should jump to TRT right away. Like yeah. in Thomas's case, he could probably correct this to a large extent just by eating more food and sleeping more because yeah. he actually has like lifestyle induced like low T as opposed yeah. to some people <laughs> where it is if they had like adequate micronutrient intake, adequate macronutrient intake, adequate exercise regimen, et cetera. They weren't holding excessive body fat that produces more estrogen that then has negative feedback. There's a lot of things that people don't optimize first before they jump shit or jump the gun and get on TRT. So just be aware that the context of his situation may be a bit different than yours and doesn't necessarily mean that you need TRT and just understand, you know, you're like, basically the end of the story is get your blood work and be able to interpret it yeah. before you jump the gun and just assume. And obviously having symptoms is a big deal too. So you mentioned how up to date, you've been symptom free, even when you're dieting pretty aggressively. So like, that's definitely notable as yeah, well. It's, you know, and you know, physicians that I've consulted with, and of course, in my own experience, like my first lab work, FYI, was because I thought that I had I, the C word. You know, the C word, C O V I D. I thought that maybe I had it because I, I got a respiratory thing. And then my doctor tested me, not negative, you know, with a rapid test. And anyway, they were, let's go ahead and let's run some lab work. And that's when I noticed my test levels are low. I feel good. My libido is good. Everything's good. So there's a, something that's very important and something you probably can learn a lot on Derek's channel too is that like, just because your numbers are low, like lifestyle is a big piece of it, how you feel. So, you know, if I was having all these like symptoms, like I was lethargic, my, like my strength is phenomenal. It's you know, better than it's been in a long time right now, but I'm, I know I'm not sleeping. So that drives my test down. I know that I'm in a caloric deficit. So that drives my test down. But I also, I've never really worried about it because I know that there's different ways to kind of manipulate. You know, I, I look at things through the mTOR pathway all the time, autophagy, these different processes, excuse me. It's, I feel good. And my biggest question to myself, which is why I brought you on, why I've kind of talked is like, if I feel good, is it really worth it for me? And I guess the answer is just kind of like, you know, if that's a bridge you want to cross and that's where you want to go, there probably yeah. is some benefit there. But until I, I feel like I need it and I do continue to redline myself, which by the way, people make comments about the bark, dark circles under my eyes all the time because yeah, sometimes I sleep like four hours a night because I work like a madman because I'm just, that's how I'm wired. It's always going to be that way. So there probably will come a time where it's realistic for me to jump on that ship and I'm not opposed to it. And for a lot of the men that are watching this, um, I know I have a lot of you know, men over the edge of 40. Don't be concerned with it because it actually comes through to my inbox all the time in the contact form. Like, what is my opinion on it? And I try to keep it close to my chest because it's not something that like, I'm super, super well versed in. I'm not a yeah. pharma guy. Um, Derek, you, you own a clinic, right? So Derek does this you know, as far as hormones. So that's why I wanted to bring him on. But anyhow, make sure you do check him out. Put a, put a link down to, his, uh, down to his YouTube channel down below. And anything else you want to add? understand your blood work is the main thing, I guess, at the end of the day and educate yeah. yourself because unfortunately, there's not a lot of physicians who will be able to elucidate this very clearly for you. A lot of it will come to personal interpretation of your level of quality of life, your personal goals, yeah. et cetera, and your yeah. own blood work and whatnot. So 
So. Don't want to ramble too much, but that is uh, my last spiel. <laughs> Dead on. Most doctors aren't. That's not what they're meant to do. They're meant to <laughs> write a note generally. <laughs> so yeah. uh, anyhow, man, uh, appreciate it. And as always, man, make sure you guys check out Derek's channel. Another thing that's very important is because I'm fat adapted, it means that I probably have a pretty strong muscle preservation effect. Okay, what I mean by that is ketones by nature are very leucine sparing. Okay, they preserve a lot of the amino acid leucine, so you're not catabolizing, you're not breaking down as much muscle tissue. Now, it's arguable that over the last couple of years, I've lost a little bit of muscle mass, but a lot of it is lifestyle oriented. I have kids now, I wanna be mobile, I wanna be rolling around on the ground. I don't care to be as big as I possibly can. That's not my goal, and never really has been my goal, except when I was maybe like 19. But the point is, is that that's probably why Another reason why I'm able to maintain mass with relatively low testosterone levels because it's so leucine sparing. I'm not just trying to plug the keto diet and say it's perfect here, but it's another piece of why I'm able to do what I do. Plus, you can't deny that you just have to work hard now and then. So now we're gonna break down some of my lab work. Okay, it's popping up on the screen, you're gonna see some of it. And again, there's a screen recording to show that nothing has been falsified. I'm logging into the secure portal that LabCorp gave me, and it's all fine and dandy. Before we get into that, subscribe down to Derek's channel. I put a link down below. He's got a lot of good kind of uh, hormonal content, stuff like that, for those that are interested in that piece. Let's break it down real quick. My glucose was still high. Okay, I mentioned before, that is a normal thing for me. If I wear a continuous glucose monitor, which I have in the past, I generally find that my glucose goes down throughout the rest of the day. Why is it elevated? It's pretty common with people that are doing keto or people that are fasting. I don't wanna beat a you-know-what into the ground. That's just the way that it is. As I eat something, once I eat, my glucose drops a little bit because my insulin levels go up. Problem is, is I'm so glucose intolerant to some degree that in the morning when my cortisol levels go up and I have that dawn phenomena, which is normal in the morning, my glucose is elevated. It's not really something to worry about. Generally, my HbA1c is in the fours and I'm good. But if you guys want me to test that, I can. I don't feel the need to have to justify myself all the time with my HbA1c, but if it helps people, then sure. Okay, this one's a lot more expanded. So I did a full urinalysis as well creatinine, all these things that people would say would be elevated on a keto diet, not elevated, okay? The only things that are slightly elevated, which aren't even really elevated, is my AG ratio, which I'm like one point out of the range, which doesn't really mean anything. Dehydration could have that effect. Uh, then my AST, my liver enzymes, slightly, slightly elevated at 45, but we're not talking any kind of crazy elevation here, so I'm not worried about that. But the cool thing is, is a month prior when I had gotten my other blood work, it was well within range. So I'm not worried about that. Different things can cause that. And then we get into my lipid profile again, which is really cool because last time my cholesterol was really good. Now my cholesterol is even better. My total cholesterol went down to 164. So this is great. Okay, doing keto, I'm stoked to see this. My HDL at 74, so it's quite high. My LDL, decently low. My triglycerides, very low, 45 on a scale of zero to 149. And I am full blown keto right now. So that dispels a lot of the whole keto cholesterol thing. Although I have to play devil's advocate and say that there are genetic factors at play. However, I kind of have a history of higher cholesterol in my family. So this is kind of intriguing. Whatever is going on, keto was working very, very well for me. But I think the biggest piece here is how I pay attention to my overall inflammatory markers within my body and I try to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. That being said, if all of these cholesterols were uh, terrible cholesterols and they were very dense LDL, then we would have a problem, but I digress. The other thing to make sure that is noted is that if there is any kind of exogenous testosterone use, like from testosterone replacement therapy, a lot of times you see these numbers go up, sometimes astronomically, sometimes not a whole lot. Your lipid panel would be completely out of whack. And there's ways to combat it, but especially your HDL. Your HDL levels would be crushed. And comparatively, my HDL is a little bit lower than I've seen it in the past, but not terribly lower. Then we move into some of my hematology. This is where there was some scrutiny before, and Derek did a full breakdown video when he and I were together. My red blood cell count is high, and one could argue that, yeah, that means that, you know, you're on something exogenous. I mean, I do a lot of cardio, and here's the thing. 
my red blood cell count is still high. My hemoglobin had dropped a little bit from my last test and my hematocrit had dropped a little bit from my last test. So at first glance, some would say, oh, he donated blood and dropped his blood levels so that his hematocrit would drop for this next test. Had I done that, right, my red blood cell count would probably have dropped. But additionally, hematocrit has a very long lead time. It's hard to just dump it immediately with dropping blood. Anyhow, I don't want to go into the detail there. I explained it on Derek's channel. Everything else is well within range. Okay, then let's get into this other interesting stuff here. Um, interesting thing is I had negative ketones in the urine, but that's not a huge deal because I know that you're only measuring your acetoacetate, which isn't really what matters here. If my blood levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate were elevated, that's all that matters. Anyhow, moving on. When it comes down to the questions that were at play a little bit and with should I do testosterone replacement or not, things like that, it's very evident that there is not testosterone at play in my system as far as an exogenous hormone because we look at iron. What's wild is my iron levels in my last test were very low, and some people were concerned. It was down to, I think, a 37. Important context there, when I went to the doctor, I was getting a checkup. I was, one of the reasons I was going was to get IV therapy, vitamin C, but also IV therapy glutathione, because I was feeling really cruddy. So I needed to film, I wanted to do that. So anyway, we got lab work done. Not uncommon for your iron levels to be completely crushed if inflammation is in play, because I was sick. Now, you probably have heard some of the videos on my channel that have come out where I sound nasally and I sound a little congested. That's why, kind of makes sense during that time period. So now when we look at my iron, my iron levels are normal, okay? So the other thing that we would have to look at is if I were to have just gone and donated blood and dumped blood to drop my hematocrit levels or my hemoglobin levels, we would have seen crushed iron levels again. My iron levels have gone up. And it's not like I just took an iron supplement because my total iron binding capacity, everything has moved up into a healthy range. If I had dumped blood enough to drop my hematocrit, you probably would have seen that change. But the big one, the big, big one, and this is what we talked about on Derek's channel, my FSH and my LH, that's follicle stimulating hormone and your luteinizing hormone. I probably got the most scrutiny because of that, because it wasn't in the last test. Well, the last test wasn't designed for this, but if we want to get into hormone science and stuff, we can talk about that. It's called the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, and it's the hypothalamus communicating with the pituitary, which then sends a signal down to the testes, okay, which then works with everything to produce testosterone and ultimately create a man, right? So in this case, if there was any kind of uh, testosterone therapy, you typically see those numbers crushed because you're impeding your body's natural ability to produce it by having something exogenous come in. You're stepping in to that feedback loop and you're artificially stopping that feedback loop because now the basically testes are able to say, oh, we have plenty of testosterone, so we don't need to send a signal to the brain to produce more. Okay, now, since those FSH and LH numbers are there, that means that everything is communicating. It means that they are trying to pump testosterone because there is not an exogenous form in the system. Okay, so then if we look at my testosterone levels, we see that yes, my serum levels are low on the low side, but it's my free testosterone that is definitely low, okay, clinically low. So then we get right back to it. I feel good. So I leave it up to you guys to some degree. I want to hear what you think. I personally don't feel like I need it if I feel good, okay? but I'm not opposed to it. And if it's one of those things where like, you look at uh, hypogonadism and if it is actually causing an issue with insulin, if it is actually causing an issue with things, then it's something that I absolutely would entertain. One last thing, we'll kind of wrap this up here. My IGF levels are on the high side, but not super, super high. Okay? I think that comes to play with how I eat, how I manipulate my growth hormone levels a little bit with my fasting, how I play my certain training into that. Anyhow, not super high. Uh, growth hormone serum levels aren't super high, just right in range. And my vitamin D levels are nice and level. And some people did ask questions, how do you maintain such good vitamin D levels? I try to get a good amount of sun, but I think largely it comes from my diet. I eat a lot of sardines, I eat a lot of oysters, I eat a lot of these high omega-3 rich foods that are also rich in vitamin D. I also eat all cuts of meat so that I'm getting all forms of vitamin D coming in in the dietary form. This is what the internet should be like. If someone is going to create a rebuttal video, take the high road and go out there, reach out, and have an adult discussion. Don't create this toxic environment. Everything has context. 
and you should always look at the big picture to try to better yourself and better those around you. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.